nothing I ever do is ever good enough. I just want to be left the hell alone. That's what you want? Yeah. Fine, great, do whatever the hell you want. You leave your socks all over this house, dress like a pig, play your stupid ass video game, I don't care, I'm done. What? I thought the idea about 10 years ago, I thought of a movie called The Breakup, where they just break up. Uh, a lot of times you see romantic comedies and they have like, uh, if you don't uh, marry the girl, then you don't receive the five million dollars. Or uh, I'm going to date someone just to prove that this is how relationships work and I'm going to write it in a magazine. And I thought relationships are kind of strange enough and, and funny enough on their own. And what about one where they just sort of break up? That's what I loved about it because it wasn't one of those cliché romantic comedies where it gets wrapped up in a pretty little bow. It's complex and it's done so well with such a balance of being funny and also heartfelt and emotional. Honey, um, you, uh, you should really go get ready. Yeah, get ready. Well, these two writers, Jay Lavender and Jeremy Gerlich, who I thought had written a screenplay that I thought was funny, uh, I went to them and said, you guys want to work on this project? And he said, I always wanted to do like the anti-romantic comedy. He said, I wanted to do a movie that's sort of like the odd couple, but with a guy and a girl, where in the first, in the first scene, the, the guy and the girl break up, and then the rest of the movie is dealing with the breakup. And so one of the things he did when we sat in that meeting is he only had about five minutes of riffs. And one of the things that you'll see in the movie, he had a riff about, uh, you the know... Sister's a wh your whore of a sister. Your whore of a sister's a real treat, and your grandfather, did he touch, touch the, the kid, kid? Did he not, not touch, touch the, the kid? Wait, don't you learn some English? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have a grandfather on the board of some fancy college. Keyword being was, did he touch the Filipino exchange student? Did he not touch the exchange student? So he did these sort of five minutes of riffs with us. And he said, what do you guys think? Which then led us to really sort of bunkering in, and we spent... For the most part, November and December at Vince's house, 12 to 20 hours a day, every day except for about three or four, working on the script in his dining room. When it was ready, he said, this is it. You know, I've worked on the script with the writers. I want to star in it. I want to produce it. And it was just, it was a really, I thought, a terrific idea for a film and, and really kind of an out-of-the-box version of a romantic comedy. I uh, read the script for The Breakup and knew that Vince was attached to the movie. And it's hard not to respond to Vince's enthusiasm. Peyton and I had actually worked together on Bring It On. Um, so I had known him from that experience. And then we all really loved Down With Love. Let's uh, bring the dolly back here. Peyton, yeah. I liked the movie Down With Love that he did, what he did with the camera on that movie. I thought it was interesting, and that movie had a fun pace to it. And when I sat and talked to him, thought he was terrific. Whee! One thing that's great about Peyton is he's funny himself. He has a good sense of humor, so he's a good guy to sort of bounce stuff off of. So I really like that about him. When I came on board, uh, Vince was obviously attached, but we had not cast Brooke yet. From the start, Vince and I talked about Jennifer Aniston for this role because we're both big fans of hers. And she's one of the few actresses that can pull off this type of comedy and, and the drama. She also has a quality that's very likable. There's a genuineness to Jen that's very real. And she's also really funny, and not funny in a way where she's annoying. She's funny in a way where she's also still kind of warm and appealing. So uh, I just thought she would be the best person to play the part. I had never met Vince before. And we met and had dinner and talked about it. And it sounded great. And he was adorable and fun. And it just seemed like a perfect timing. And then you read the script. And then I read the script. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then that was a problem, but no. Uh, and then I read the script, and it had everything that I love, which is a combination of all the levels of drama, comedy. It's a little action. Ow! We were fortunate enough to have an amazing supporting cast on the movie. I mean, the names that we got for this movie, uh, in large part due to relationships Vince had, well, this is my third time working with Vince. Actually, my fourth time, if you count Rudy. On Rudy, we were just cast separately. We met on that movie. Yeah, I first met Vince pre-swingers. And he was actually, like, kind of shy and quiet. But he And he was telling me about how he and his friends had this movie they were trying to get made, and one of the characters was based on him. And I remember thinking, why would anyone base a character on this guy? He's so boring. <laughs> I met Vince years ago through, through a friend, uh, and, and we've been uh, friends for a couple years. But I, I you know... Really got to know him working with him on Dodgeball. Hello. I'm doing an interview. God, I met Vincenzo, uh, I think it was 18 years old, just through Hollywood, and, you know, we were auditioning for the same roles, you know, in the same bars. I've been one of Vince's friends since Starsky and Hutch. So that would have been, uh, what, three years ago? Something like that? Yeah. It, feel, it feels like 15, though. He can really put the years on you. 
I've been friends with Vince Vaughn for about 15 years, and uh, we worked uh, together as actors when we met on an after-school special. Peter's great. I mean, he's smart. He's been on film since he was a kid, so there's nothing he doesn't know. And he's a terrific producer, and he's got a real, you know, good taste, and that means a lot as a producer. He's, you know, you can trust when he says something's working or not working. He's also a great actor. That's why I met him was as an actor, so, you know, I thought it'd be fun to have him jump in and play this part, and it was just fun having him do it. Please don't touch my ruffles. Put that one back. Those are my ruffles, so don't eat them, please. The idea that there's so many talented people around you and that uh, anything you hit their way, they're going to hit it back. There's nothing like working like that. It's great, because it's so rare. It just makes the day better. It makes your acting better. The people around you make your acting better. It's great. This is the, you know, sets like this are the best kind. Vince really wanted those people, you know, wrote those roles. You know, he wrote that role for Cole Hauser. He wrote that role for John Favre. He wrote the role for Justin Long, people in his life that, you know, he really admires. So that was great just to be able to draw them all in. I want you to take the rest of the day off to be sad and then come back to work tomorrow ready to take care of business. Got it? Mm -hmm. I loved working with Judy Davis. I'm a big fan of Judy Davis. And so when she got hired, I was pretty much over the moon. I was truly over the moon, and she was perfect. And Mr. Byrne and Vaughn played my father. My dad was in Swingers, and that movie turned out well, and he was in Made. But I have my dad, and it's just fun for me, and he, he always does a good job, and it's my good luck charm, you know? We talked a lot about who would play the role of uh, Brooke's mother in the movie, and it's not a huge role, but you really want to get a sense of where Brooke comes from, that maybe she's from a more affluent family from Lake Forest. And we were just talking one day about, oh, what about this, what else? Well, let's get Anne Margaret. And, and we were all laughing. It's like, well, what if we could get Anne Margaret? Is it possible we could get the Anne Margaret? And uh, we got Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret, my mom, come on. I got to watch Anne Margaret right away on a Harley. This is just a cameo, but the, I just thought it would be so much fun. I had never met Vince or Jennifer, um, and I'm having the best time. The scene that we're doing, I was laughing out loud. There we go! Michael Higgins plays Jennifer's brother. He's an a cappella singer for a band called the Tone Rangers, and he takes it very seriously. It's very hard to describe the true magic of a group of guys singing in perfect harmony. Mm. It's transcendent. I am absolutely on board with what Richard believes. And if it makes me uncool, it's that's it, it is it does make me uncool. Good mom. Excellent. And Gary on the kick drum. Come, come. On the kick drum. Nine actors, one room, singing, jokes, drama. All in one scene. I think we're good. I know we're tired. Do, 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 I can't do that. It's do. good. Okay, forget it. <laughs> All right, very good. That was it. It was a little hard to get through those scenes, I got to tell you. I don't know how we got through a lot of scenes. It's very hard. It's hard. This was truly the first time that I'd actually had a rehearsal process where we dug in deep to the material, scene by scene. Well, I'm going to go do the dishes. Cool. It'd be nice if you help me. I think once we shot the breakup scene, we fell into a, a very comfortable place. We saw what, what it was. It, we felt the tone of the movie, and that kind of set the pace for the weeks to come. Fine. I'll help you do the damn dishes. Oh, come on. You know what? No. That's, see, that's not what I want. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? Why? See, that's my whole point. For the most part, the way we'd work on set would be that Vince and Jen would stick pretty close to the script, but then after maybe two or three takes, um, you know, when we knew that we had it, just let them go. The way we would volley together, it was just, you don't get that all the time. You really don't. I mean, I had that on, on my show, which we just have a trust, but that was also 10 years in the making, and we just met and had it pretty instantly. Like, you could sort of just know what, what it was the other one needed or where we were going or what the scene needed. And we always felt like we were pretty much in sync. God damn it, no one's guessing shoes. <laughs> you a big shoe, then a small shoe, and no one got it. You gotta draw something different. Suck, Alice. 
asshole. To me, it's just being truthful with each moment and letting each moment be what it wants to be. I don't really approach it saying, okay, this is all going to be comedic or this is all going to be dramatic, but I do say this is nice to see this in a comedic way. It's funny. We can push the envelope on reality slightly for comedy, and then we can come to this point and play it very simple and very real. Vince and I talked a lot at the beginning about our mutual dislike of really brightly lit, flat comedies. I brought in a bunch of visual reference, things like the, uh, the Woody Allen movies that Gordon Willis shot in the 70s and 80s, uh, that really captured the sense of, of place, the sense of the city. And when we were talking about cinematographers, we uh, met with Eric Edwards. Well, I recommended Eric because I had worked with him on Clay Pigeons, and I just know he's a good cinematographer. And him and Peyton together have really given the movie a great look. We got to shoot this movie kind of in order, and that's unbelievably helpful. Never do you get to shoot in order of scenes, and it was so helpful. You know, you knew exactly where you were going. You weren't having to jump back emotionally to the place that you hadn't even explored yet. It just gave a wonderful flow. It's in a shower, Gary. Dynamite! You guys are going to kill each other, okay? Brooke and Gary, throughout the course of the movie, you see that they get a lot of advice from outside sources, and unfortunately, in this case, it's terrible advice. We wanted our characters to get advice from people that were sort of insane. And even though their advice might be sound, their way of delivering it and the way they had to do it, you see they're totally out of their minds. Have you checked your email? I don't check emails. But you get a program that records keystrokes, it costs like 20 bucks, it's very easy to use, okay? You get a password, you check her email, you find out everything about her. That's how I found out about the Puerto Rican that Stacey was running around with. That was one of the fun things in the movie is bringing Vince Vaughn and John Favreau together again. And it's interesting because they do switch roles in this. You know, Vince is the straight man and John gets to be the funny guy. But it's also interesting to look at, you know, it's 10 years after Swingers. And in a weird way, it's like it's almost a version of those guys in Swingers 10 years later. When you have two actors like that, it was one of the few times that we rolled two cameras, which really constricts lighting. But we had them opposing the bar and we had an A and a B camera on them and when you do that you know that you're getting everything when they're improv -ing. I think that they trusted that Vince and I would come up with some fun stuff and we both pay attention to what the scene and the story is really about so we don't deviate too much from what the beats of the scene have to be. Oh, you know what it's her fault she got hurt you shouldn't even feel bad about it she should have expected it from you. Some people improvise and they may have interesting stuff between them but it doesn't serve the movie it's not about anything. Mm -hmm. Me and John know we need to keep this scene about where the movie needs to go next. So we're able to improvise, but keep it alive and keep it you know, fresh and also not betray the story of the film. In fact, find a better way of moving the story of the film. We know each other very well, so there's a, a lot of leeway that we have to go off book and have, have fun with one another. And I think those scenes are meant to be sort of a breath of fresh air away from the, this love story and the breakup that's building throughout the whole movie. So it's fun to come in there as a bit of a palate cleanser, which is what we what those, those scenes are. I know that I've caused you a lot of pain. And the funny thing is, all I really want to do is make you happy. One of the things that I liked about the movie was that these two people grow throughout the course of the breakup. They become better people as a result of it, because you know the situation forces them to not only look at the other person, but really to look at themselves and saying, OK, it does take two to tango, and clearly I'm not uh, doing my share of the work. It's been fun as we're going through this process now of watching audiences watch this movie. Uh, as you'll see a couple that will come in and they'll sit down and they'll watch the movie and you know, the film starts and it's funny. Then it begins to take a turn and it starts to get more intense. You'll see couples sitting there and they'll just kind of reach over and grab each other's hands. And they sort of have the expression of, that is so us. Or they say, you know, we don't want to let that happen to us because at times it's really a cautionary tale. And it's just, you know, if you have something you love, yeah, there might be problems, it might be difficult, but really be careful how you treat it because it's a pretty fragile thing. That's sort of what's beautiful about this and why it's so complicated is that in relationships, there's always going to be an ebb and a flow to, the, to, to each person. And, you know, there's good qualities of Gary and there's good qualities of Brooke, and then there's both of their baggage that they come to the relationship with and, and not having the tools, and you're watching them not know how to behave and to help the other out. And so it just kind of implodes on itself. I think it's a very kind of fun look at the breaking up process, because I think it's very kind of relatable to stuff that we do go through. And I think it's also hilarious. There's some really funny stuff just because of what comes out of that subject matter. And I think there's also some honest and sincere stuff, too, in the movie. And uh, I'm really proud of it. I think it's a really funny, really uh, simple movie.